What's up guys, it's Fide Master William Grafe with you, and today I want to share with you the most incredible line that I have discovered. It combines ideas from the Stafford, from the Traxler, from the Knackmans, and from all of our favorite lines, um, and it is called the Bush Gas Gambit. And I am just so excited to share with you, I've been researching this for, for a very long time. Um, and it is here we play, instead of defending our pawn, instead of even counterattacking our opponent's pawn, we play Bishop C5. Just develop a piece and inviting our opponent to take it. And I'll get back to knight takes e5, but the most common move here is bishop to c4. Just a very logical move, continuing to develop for black, for white, um, and white's still attacking this pawn. Um, maybe they probably expect us to get a hold of our senses, play knight c6, defend our pawn, transpose to an Italian game. But no, we play here knight f6. Um, completely insane. So now, by all indications, white should take this pawn. It is a free pawn. It attacks f7. Uh, with the bishop, with the knight. It um, invites d4 for, for, for white to play. White is just one move away from castling. Um, how could you not take this pawn? Even if you're stockfish, you would absolutely take this pawn. <laughs> so knight takes e5. And here, instead of um, getting a hold of our senses again and defending f7 <laughs> like a normal person by castling, we play here knight c6. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> stockfish thinks we've gone completely insane, and maybe we have. Um, and here, white basically has three principal moves. They have knight takes f7, they have bishop takes f7, and they have knight takes e6. And uh, I'm going to get to all of them. I'm going to start with knight takes e6, actually. Um, I, I, I know we're looking forward to what the hell are we doing? What if they just take on f7? But knight takes e6, we're going to play d takes e6. And this is combining ideas from the Stafford. From the Stafford, we play here knight f6, knight takes e5, knight c6. Except the issue with this is that this has become very, very well known. Um, but this is still a very, very strong idea. We want to play d takes c6 to open up our bishop, to open up our queen. Um, and basically, we want to play bishop c5 next turn um, without interference from this pawn. And so you'll note that the best line for white to play um, will have c3 to prepare d4 to block this bishop. So we're going to get back to this position now. We've opened our queen. We've opened our bishop with this fantastic d takes c6 capture. White probably will play a move like d3 to protect their pawn, um, except here they are essentially lost. They g4, attacking f2, and we're going to come after them with a classic Stafford idea, um, attacking f2, attacking h2. Typically, white will have a knight on f3 when you castle, um, and you take it for granted. It's always there. It defends all these squares. Uh, it allows you to play d4. Um, but you don't realize what you have until it's gone, and here white is completely Checkmate it. Not able to deal with both these threats. Um, knight c3, they're actually going to have the exact same problem. So castles here. Still knight g4. <laughs> Still knight g4. Um, we are threatening queen h4 once again. White cannot interfere with this because our queen is helping. Um, and here, okay, knight g4, what are we doing with just h3? Here we take advantage of the fact that this bishop is not protected. Knight takes f2. Take again check and here we will come out up material so it is very dangerous for, for white to play like this they need queen f3 after which knight e to to add additional defense around here knight e5 deals with um we don't want to get checkmated ourselves um but now they need to protect their bishop queen h4 we can keep attacking this is lots of fun um so yes this is this is pretty much a disaster for, for white to play. You can see d3 a lot of people play, which loses immediately. Castles, knight g4. Um, queen f3 is not even found that often at the time. So, knight takes c6. That pretty much handles that. And I would recommend watching videos by like Eric Rosen if you want um, more Stafford ideas. So, okay. We want to know what happens if they take our pawn. Let's start with bishop takes f7. And I know maybe a lot of you who watch maybe Levy Rosman or some others might say, hey, this looks like some other line. This looks like if knight g5 here, the fried liver attack, bishop c5, um, um, the Traxler counter gambit, where they can take on f7 and maybe we, we, we sacrifice on f2. Um, the issue with the Traxler is if they play bishop takes f7 and just retreat their bishop back, that's kind of the end of things. Knight takes f7 launches some exciting lines. Um, um, but bishop takes f7 is, is kind of kind of the end of things, um, and we're kind of just down a pawn with our king in the center. So, 
we will get back to our version in the Bush Gas Gambit, where now if they play Bishop takes F7, this is very much not the end of things, because this knight is hanging. Um, and this knight is defending this bishop. So naturally, the only way for white to um, not lose a piece, presumably, according to almost everybody's played this, is knight takes c6. Our favorite capture. We get to play d takes c6. They must save the bishop. Where do you go with the bishop? Let's say c4. Bishop b3, bishop c4. I will give you a hint. Bishop b3 is even worse than bishop c4. <laughs> but both of these are going to be losing. Uh, two bishop takes f2. Little does white know, but they've only developed one piece. We have a lot of them that we are about to use really quickly. So bishop takes f2. King takes f2. If king f1, um, this is just going to be an even worse version. White is only up here one pawn for almost no king protection. King takes f2, bishop, queen d4. And so white's like, oh, okay, I guess you get the bishop back. No, we do not want that. Bishop g4, we're going to keep attacking. Bishop g4, this queen is now trapped, if not for bishop e2. This is why I said bishop b3 was even worse. We go queen d4 check. This king has got nowhere to go. This king's got absolutely nowhere good to go. King f1 is going to be pro even worse. Rook f8 coming this way. We're going to move our knight. We're going to play queen f2 checkmate. King e1, bishop g4. Queen's got nowhere to go. So bishop e2, okay. White's still up a piece. They just they they, they just need to finish developing. Knight takes e4. We don't care about this bishop. We're threatening checkmate. Okay, white's got one way to defend checkmate. It's rook here. But now we've got our rooks in the game. Rook f8. All right, white still want, has a lot of things they want to do, but if there is a rook trade, they will get checkmated. If a move like this, take, take, checkmate. Okay, white has one move. Again, that doesn't lose the game. It is bishop f3 to keep this rook on the board. Again, white's technically up a piece, but they're not using anything. They haven't made a move on this whole side of the board. And right now, an incredible move. Rook e8. And <laughs> the point of rook e8, we are threatening to win the game with a king move. With a king move to unleash the fury of all of our pieces on this poor white king. What can white possibly do in this position? Um, it is completely lost, if not for one move, after which they are only mostly lost. Um, but yes, I mean, I mean, if, if, if a move like d3 here, we just play king d8 and <laughs> rook takes here. And, and all of our pieces are just crushing this poor white king. So c3 they could play to try and attack our queen. Knight takes c3. Knight takes c3. Okay, they're going to develop a piece. King away. <laughs> Check. Check. Okay, so knight takes c3. They got to move maybe this knight into the game. However, they are still completely lost. We are going to take here. And now both captures lose. Rook takes f3. We play now. Queen g1 check. Pinning this knight. Checkmate. Pawn takes f3. Just check. Rook f2. Rook takes f3. They're, none of white's pieces are helping against this and all these massive pins that are coming at them. Bishop e2. White can play um, in order to not lose the game immediately, I believe. Um, um, but this is still not looking too good for them, I believe. We can go takes and takes and check and queen f2 coming. So not good for white. None of their pieces are helping. That's conceptually what's going on here, right? We, we, we started out here and they're only moving these two pieces. They're only moving these guys. Um, takes here, takes, takes bishop c4, right? They finally want to castle. They finally want to start developing, but we're going to keep striking. We're going to keep coming after them. Um, I will note... If you want to play this with white, there's one good move here. It is bishop to h5. A completely, completely ridiculous. This game has been played, this position has been played so many times, and bishop to h5 has been played eight times. Such an odd square for your bishop. However, it is stopping us from using this g4 square that we wanted to use. And so now we can actually keep having some fun here with queen d4, threatening checkmate. White should castle. Queen e5 attacking this bishop. They should move it somewhere. f3, e2, h5. We're still holding off d4. Our king's in the center, but look, all of our pieces, we, we want to use them all. Um, um, and so white can't really get to us because white hasn't used their pieces. We're going to play knight g4, attacking here. We're going to play h4. Um, so we're still going to have a lot of fun in positions like this. Okay, now let's get to the biggest line. It is knight takes f7. Knight takes f7. We are now down two pawns, and we're about to be down even more. Um, given that we are facing a nasty fork here. However, if you are a fan of the track, so you are not going to know that we are playing bishop takes f2, 
10 times out of 10 here, um, we are just not down enough material. <laughs> we need to sacrifice another bishop. Okay. White here has two moves. They have king takes f2, and they have dodging this with king f1. King f1 might seem a little bit more appealing here if you're playing the white pieces, um, because king takes f2 invites knight takes e4 check, and so we'll get to that soon. But let's start king f1. Okay. We need to not lose our queen. And now if you're white, you are only up one pawn. And that typically sounds good, but it's not going to sound good if this rook completely toasts your king. So you should probably get rid of that rook. Uh, and now white faces the classic problem of the bush gas gambit, which is that they have no development on this side of the board whatsoever. They have only moved their bishop and their knight, and we are going to come after this king with everything we have, d5, um, attacking this bishop. They should take it. Uh, I'll note if they take with a bishop, we have bishop g4, trapping the queen. Beautiful queen trap because, again, they have moved nothing here. So the queen is completely boxed in by her own pieces. Uh, they probably don't want to take this bishop because they literally played king f1 instead of taking it before. Um, so e takes d5, knight d4. Now, in the Traxler, we actually have the same position except with this pawn here. But it's even better without the pawn in the way because our queen is has this mate threat all the time, tying this queen down. So the most common move in the Traxler is still the most common move here. It is c3, and it's kind of a necessary one because bishop g4 is coming, and that would trap the queen if white had not played c3. Um, bishop e2 was possible to move before, but we just put our knight there to control that. So bishop g4 attacking the queen. White should play queen a4, c6, and white loses. <laughs> All of a sudden, white is immediately lost because <laughs> there's queen e1 checkmate. And they have no pieces, no rooks or anything that can help them guard it. Um, all their pieces are here, 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 or just completely undeveloped. So king takes f2, they could play. Um, but again, they're going to lose immediately. Knight e4. If they go on to our discovered attack, we will collect that queen. Thank you very much. This is why we love discovered attacks. King g1. Queen f6. We are just gonna we're, we're just wa waltzing right into f2. We're just waltzing in there. Nobody's there to stop us. Easy checkmate. Easy checkmate. Nobody's there to guard us. H3, they can create one more square, but all of our pieces are just completely hammering this white king. And now white has a couple other um tries that they can make. They can play h3 if they really are looking at this this idea. But again, in a lot of these lines, so let's say we just pull this bishop right out. First of all, one thing about h3 is that that pawn's no longer protecting g3. Uh, every time you push a pawn, that's going to be a problem. Now our next move is going to be knight e4. In fact, I think we could have played knight e4 last move as well. But knight e4, we're looking at knight g3, we're looking at knight f2, we're looking at queen f6 check. Um, and the worst thing that can possibly happen in these positions is that you are going to castle long and you are going to take this knight. Um, and use this F file and this E file, and you're going to have a ton of compensation for being an exchange down. Um, but I will show you some more fun lines, because most lines, white can e not even get that far. So D3, let's say they play. D3 makes some sense, because they want to create a square for their queen. No matter. Of course, we're sacrificing things, because we're completely insane. Um, now here, we're finally making them take our own bishop. Knight check. Um, um, okay, so now we get to this position. Um, King g1 is completely lost because of queen to c5. Queen to c5 is putting a killer, killer uh, discovery on that king, and our next move is knight f3. And this knight does such a great job controlling against any block there, so they can attack our queen, it doesn't matter. Knight f3 is double checkmate. Um, I'll note that that's actually the same problem here. If king takes f2, knight g4. Um, now if king f1, again, we're just going to slip right in there. Uh, this knight blocks this block, right? No block blocking there. Queen f2 checkmate coming next. King g1, queen c5. Beautiful move, queen c5. Um, White can even give this check no matter. We just want knight f3, and this king is toasted. Uh, this king can dodge it again, but then queen f8. 
and we're going to get in there. <laughs> okay, so we can get back to this position with d3, bishop g4, attacking the queen, bishop e2, takes, knight g4, king, king e1, white can play. And so it's like, okay, we just need to slide this bishop out of the way, but if we take d3, maybe they go there. And if we take f3, maybe they'll go there. Now, they really shouldn't survive too much either way, but I just love the gorgeous finish that we have here, which is queen h4 check, g3, queen back to e7. Literally, all we did was make them play g3, but this just shows the complete dominance of all these pieces. Like, white just has absolutely no defense for knight f3. We just made that pawn move, and knight f3 is our next move. Isn't that brilliant? So, 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 so. White does have one um, engine recommendation here. It is the move d6. It is very, very tricky because c takes d6. Now the point is white will do the same line, but with no queen c5. So they put our own pawn there. And queen takes d6 we should play. Um, and we're still doing fine um, after queen takes d6. Um, they still should not take our bishop. Well, they will still lose the game. Um, um, and yes, our next move is simply going to be bishop to g4 and castles long. Um, I think the engine recommendation here is d3 and doing the same exact line. But you have to be completely insane to play this for white. Uh, King g1 here again is going to lose the game. King e1, queen e7. Um, Again, this bishop is going to have all sorts of strong threats. I think we're going to end up in some crazy position like this. Um, we still want to take that knight as well. They can't take our knight because of rook to d8, winning the queen. We're going to castle along. We're going to keep attacking. And um, no, we absolutely have no interest in trading queens. Because with queens on the board, we can attack. With queens off the board, it is very difficult to, to attack an opposing king. Um, so, yes. Lots and lots of fun you will have in this position. Probably even more fun you will have than in the track surf you had the e-pawn on the board because we have the additional ideas of queen down the e-file. Okay. Now we will cover king takes f2. Takes e4 check. Um, now in the track slur, that's the same except a pawn here. And things are going to be looking pretty similar, but not quite the same. Wait here should play king g1. Um, everything else is very not advisable. You should not stay on this F file because after this, it is your knight in this pin and a move like D5 will disconnect this bishop from the knight and white will be in a lot of trouble. Note, not queen F6 because before we had queen F3 handled. Um, um, white here, if they have any sense in them, will play king to G1, which is overwhelmingly the move played. Um... Um, and the only engine recommendation, Stockfish still says we're losing because Stockfish is always a pessimist. King e1, I'll note queen h4 check. Um, again, this king is just nobody home. Queen f2, we, we want to play. g3 takes, uh, takes h1, and white is completely lost. King g1, though, provides white the maximal amount of safety, um, which is still not a lot, but it's still huddled around, and we here will play queen h4. So our queen was hanging, we got it out very nicely, and we're looking again at queen f2. Now, here, white has basically three options to guard queen f2. They have queen e2, they have queen f3, and they have g3. Now, queen e2 and queen f3, uh, simple for you guys, is going to be the same. Because queen f3, we're playing knight d4, and this queen needs to stay tethered to f2. Because this queen cannot allow queen f2 checkmate. So they have queen f1 and queen e3 as their options. And here if they play queen e2, we are still playing knight d4, and they have queen f1 and queen e3 as their only options. So very simple transposition. Queen f1, we are going to play here, rook to f8. Um, queen f1 is the lesser advisable of the two moves, and Stockfish is already, I believe, saying white is lost, if it thinks about this for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, Stockfish's evaluation trends in our direction. Um, we want to detether this bishop from this knight. And we have a lot of super cool ways to do it. I'll note one, so d3, so it's like, oh, okay, I'll kick this knight out. No, we're going to play b5. We're going to get that bishop out of the way. Bishop d5, bishop b7, 
We are using all of these pieces if it's the last thing we do. We are just need to get this bishop off of this knight. So now they take here. Rook takes f7. And if we get that queen out of the way, we want to play queen f2 checkmate. And um, here, white well, is completely lost. They have nowhere to move the queen where queen f2 checkmate is coming. And they just don't have enough pieces to sacrifice themselves for the queen. They can take the knight to maybe help them. Um, uh, or else, if they didn't take that knight, queen f2 would be checkmate here. But okay, castle's long. Rook f8 is coming. Knight takes c2 is coming. They're completely lost and still have absolutely no development. So b5, bishop b7. What a crazy idea that we have here. Knight c3. I believe the move is still b5 and bishop b7. And this is just awesome stuff. So mean to e3 white can play and now if you ask stockfish so okay we can take c2 looks like oh we're getting our own rook but we don't we don't really have interest in rooks all the way over here it wasn't really doing anything we still want to checkmate this king so now if you ask stockfish what to do um stockfish will say just make a draw just make a draw this queen has to stay in f2 just just go back and forth and draw i say no we are going to gum from 0, 0.0 back to the rightful place of the Bush Gauss Gambit. Castles plus two point whatever. We refuse to play openings that are less than plus two. Okay, what just happened? What did we just castle into? We saved our rook. And this rook is going to be a very important rook. We castled out of this pin, but into this. What is going on here? So if you're white and you're a reasonable person, you might say, okay. Let me move this knight. Let me move this knight to give a check. And I will take this next turn. I'm going to use my discovery. Boom. What did you just do? You just put your king there. I'll move your king, and then I'm going to take your knight. Um, only you don't know how crazy we are. D5. Literally asking you to take our pawn just because I didn't want that in the way of my bishop. I just didn't want that pawn in the way. So I just played D5. Now do it. Take my knight. Take my knight. See what happens. Take my knight, bishop g4. Your queen's under attack. My next move is queen e1 checkmate. Thank you very much. Good game. Good game. Queen moves nowhere to go. Queen here, boom, boom. g3 you could play. I do not believe that is going to be helping you out too much. You are delaying the inevitable. So, bishop takes e4, white could play if they really know what they're doing. Bishop takes e4. It's cute that you think I'd have any interest in that knight or that rook. I only have interest in bringing out my pieces towards your queen and king. Bishop g4 attacking this queen. Again, this queen needs to guard queen f2. This queen needs to guard queen e1. Okay, so you've prepared a block. That's cute. That's super cute. Bishop takes f3. Um, Now what? Now, if you have any sense in you, you'll probably take with the bishop, but you should probably shouldn't have had too much sense in you in the bush gas gambit. Rook e8 bringing in the last piece. And rook e1 checkmate is coming. So you should play g takes f3, exposing your king further. I'm still playing rook e8. And it's cute that you have that you thought I have interest in that rook. I don't. My knight's going to come back to d4. My knight's going to take f3. And it's going to blow you up. And here, Stockfish thought for a second it was plus 4 because white's up two pieces. But apparently they can barely hang on with king g2, etc. You would not want to be playing white here. So. That's this line. Nate d6, white can also play, um, in which case actually blocks our d5 um, in the knight's root here. But d5, very often this can just uh, transpose into bishop takes and a line that is completely lost. So queen takes e4, I will note, gets checkmated right away. That queen was completely tethered to queen f2 and queen e1 checkmate threats. So what to do here if you are white? You can play here g3. Okay, I play queen e7. I don't want to lose this knight. That one was an important one. And again, I want to get in the way of this. I want to kind of play d5. Uh, I want to play queen c5 check. I want to play knight d4. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things I want to do. Um, um, Stockfish says that white can hold with this ridiculous move d4. Why would you ever play d4? I mean, you can play d3, opening this attack and opening this attack. However, d3, um, um, not advisable due to, I believe, move was d5. I believe the move was d5. It is d5. Um, and all of a sudden, everything's opening up. Um, this knight's hanging. 
this file is going to open. Queen c5 check is coming. This bishop's coming into the game. Um, a complete disaster for white. So we are going to get back into the swing of things with. Uh, g3. This was apparently the miracle move for white. Here, if you ask Stockfish, g3 is the game is the way you can have a big advantage, although not as big of an advantage before as when we decline the draw by castling. So g3 white can play here. Now g3 you either have to be really good or probably really bad to play. Because g3, ordinarily in the tracks where we can play knight takes g3. However, um, because here h takes g3, queen takes g3, here we play rook f8, and that rook is is going to toast you. However, we don't have a pawn here, and queen one check is a killer intermezzo, and we have to deal with this check after which they just take our knight. So we can't play knight takes g3. However, we can just come back with our queen. Um, the move being queen to um, e7. Queen to e7. Okay, so they included g3, and now they get to take our rook. No matter. Um, we just play here. Mm, I'm sorry, I got this wrong. <laughs> Ignore what I said. We play queen of six. Queen of six makes a lot more sense. This is much more forcing. We're threatening checkmate. So we played queen h4. We provoke g3. We come back now queen f6. We could have done that right away, but we got them to play g3. And now with queen f6, we're threatening queen f2 checkmate. And so white should play here. Queen e2. Queen e2, a good move. Putting us in this pin. Um, we don't want to lose this knight, so we will play d5, a crazy move, and if we can ever just lose that pawn for nothing, we are very happy to lose that pawn for nothing. It is in the way of our rapid development. So d5, they should play bishop takes d5 to, again, control that knight, to control this knight, but that invited us to go queen d4 check. That bishop was protected here. It is not protected here, and we are going check. Okay, king g2 is not a good move for white because it just kind of puts them in this line of fire. Um, again, all the time, even like even if you don't win the game right away, and you just get this position with this great attack, and you're just down in exchange, um, but all your pieces are out, your king is safe, you're attacking their king, great, great, this is a complete, complete disaster for white. Um, um, oops, I was wrong. This move is a complete disaster for white. <laughs> um, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep striking quickly. Um, um, very interesting stuff here. Okay, yeah, knight c3, so our queen's attacked, but we can play your bishop check. So you take our bishop, now we get out of that with check, and we'll take your queen. Wow. Okay, lots of very, very, very fun lines, and, you know, I really look forward to seeing all your games in these lines. So bishop takes d5, queen d4. If white wants to play completely precisely, according to stockfish, queen e3, queen takes d5, and now they get this rook. But now here, we play knight e5. I mean, we, we don't like this pin. Right? We play here knight e5, and this is still so much fun. This is still so, so much fun. I, I, I mean, I would, give, I would give a lot of people the chance to find the, the move here for white, the one move that, that keeps an advantage. It is, I joke, I am not joking, it is h3. It is h3, the one move that keeps an advantage, and the next best move is like h4. And the reason is because bishop h3 is such a killer threat. Um, you just want to play bishop h3. So like, for example, knight c3. Um, okay, thanks. I'll take, take, and bishop h3, and I want to come in here and checkmate you, basically. And I also want to cast along, use my rook, use all my pieces, and I'm going to checkmate you. Um, and none of white's pieces are doing anything. These pieces are completely useless. White is in theory up material, but they're not using it. In all these lines, that's the issue. And that's pretty much everything. I covered everything that Stockfish said was plus four or whatever, and I still think even if your opponent is Stockfish and finds these like unbelievable defenses, you're still having fun in the, in this line. And so this is why I love the Bush Gas Gambit so much. Because when we play here Bishop C5, okay, Bishop C4, almost everybody's playing. Um, knight of six, they takes e5. How how could anybody resist this pawn? From 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 beginners to GMs to, to stockfish, everybody's going to take this pawn. Um, and now they're attacking f7. They're they're threatening d4. We play knight c6. If they play bishop takes f7, king e7. I'll note oh, he has one really tricky move here. It's bishop to b3. An unbelievable move. I'm not. 
okay, a couple people have found it. Bishop b3, it takes away our d takes c6. And because the bishop didn't go to c4, we're not attacking anything, there's d4 here. And so white's actually not down a piece. However, knight takes c6, almost everybody does. This bishop moves away, and now we're going to have so much fun with this line. Takes, takes, check here. Bishop g4, knight e4, bring our rooks into the game. This is so, so much fun. And then the knight takes f7 line, we go for bishop takes f2. I have included in the description a um, PGN, for uh, a leech study for you guys all to study this line. Uh, I'll note here, okay, there was knight takes e5, I promised I'd get to this. Knight c6, we're just trying to play a Stafford. We're literally just trying to play a Stafford. Take our knight, please. D takes c6, we play bishop c5 instead of knight f6 in this position. That would This would be a direct transposition, um, which, is, which is also great. It's also great stuff. So there's one more trick here, actually. I'll note. Anything else you can transpose directly into a Stafford. And also, even if you don't want to, but like the spirit of the Stafford, you can play here f5. Another interesting option. We have not blocked that pawn yet. We're going to play knight f6. We're going to castle our king. Um, and we're going to really have a lot of fun um, with those targets there. So here, white, if they know what they're doing, might play c3. C3 is the move to just play d4. And remember, if they play d4, they kind of solve all their problems because they it's a great developing move. It takes control of the center, and it blocks our bishop from scoping out f2, our favorite square, f2. Okay, just play d4. And white's up a pawn. How hard could it be for white to just play d4? Queen h4. Okay, we're threatening there. We're threatening here. You got to be careful if you're white. If you do play d4 now, we play queen takes e4, and we're even. Right? White, white, white didn't keep their pawn. So probably, odds are, white wants to keep their pawn. We need two good game. You just lost. This queen has to move away, and there's queen takes f2 coming, checkmate. So wait, so should play queen f3. They should be careful. Now bishop g4, there's queen g3. So now we play the most infuriating move for white, queen h6. d4 now, good game. <laughs> this bishop is not protected. How annoying is that? Okay, so if you're white now, overwhelmingly, you will play here overwhelmingly two out of three times at least, you will play here bishop c4. Okay, you attack f7. I should defend it. Uh, castles. Okay, white's excited now. They've castled. Their rook protects this bishop, right? So they're really excited to play d4. It's going to be a, a lot of trouble for us. Okay, no matter. Bishop d6. Our bishop's outlived its usefulness here. Now we're looking at h2. Okay, white plays h3. And now I will show you guys two good options here for black, actually. Two good options. This is, this is all like the engine recommendation stuff. Bishop f4. And infu again, it's so unbelievably infuriating if you're white, because you just want to move this pawn, but that pin is killer. And white, black's next two moves is very, very simple. You just want to play g5 and g4. And just 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 make sure that h pawn moves and checkmate. Just g5 and g4. Um, um, you might have a lot of fun with that. It's, it's literally, I think, uh, almost any move white plays, g5 is your move. And then almost any move white plays, g4 is your next move. Okay, bishop g4. Another great option. And I'll note here, white has one move that doesn't lose. Is it queen e3? Or is it queen d3? Trick question, they both lose. <laughs> it is neither queen e3 or queen d3. Queen e3, bishop f4. This queen needs to stay tethered to h3, actually. Because if the queen moves away from h3, takes and you lose. You have no pieces around your king to guard your king. Uh, queen d3, castles. Now, bishop h2 is the threat. Uh, against that, we're using all our pieces. Everything's in the game. Again, white got nothing in the game. They never got in d4. So queen c2 they should play, and good game again. So bishop g4, they, the, the one move is d4 itself. It's their queen's attack, but they must counterattack our queen. And this starts the beginning of a crazy line, which I'll show you. So bishop takes f3, bishop takes h6. We're going to play bishop takes e4. White, if they want an extra pawn, should play bishop takes g7. Rook g8. And now, if they keep bunching, uh-oh for them. Check, check, checkmate. <laughs> Our bishops here did such an excellent job. So here, they should know the only move here, f3. Again, instead of dealing with their own piece, they can counterattack one of ours. So rook takes g7, takes, takes. And now, again, if they want to keep pursuing an advantage, if you really want the whole engine line, it's rook e1, attacking this, forcing f5 because of this pin. You couldn't move that knight. Bishop e6 is going to pick that pawn up. Actually, we should get out of the way of this. Um, bishop takes f5, knight g3, bishop g4, and c5. 
Um, and C5 here, we're, 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 we're undermining things around here. Um, we still want to bring this rook into the game. We still want to play H5. White still doesn't really have great development, but white does have their precious, precious extra pawn, which they have come out of alive. So that is Bush Gas Gambit Theory. White has one more good move here, actually. It is knight back to F3. Not playing knight c6, not giving us the, the satisfaction of d takes c6, which opens up everything for our queen, for our bishop. Knight f3, it's a good move. They, they they keep their precious knight here. They really want to play d4. Okay, when our opponent really wants to play d4, we do not let them. d5. And now if e5, d4. <laughs> we don't let them play d4. Um, and in this position, black simply must um, um, castle and collect their pawn back. That pawn is kind of separated from his friends, and we will get it back. Um, in this position, d4 is a blunder. Just d takes e4, and they we are capturing um, at least as much stuff as they are. So they should play e takes d5, queen takes d5. White uh, says this is fantastic for for or Stockfish says this is fantastic for white. And now, um, um, this is like the Urasov gambit, um, which which um, I believe um, my buddy Jonathan Schrantz has recommended here. Queen takes d4. It's a little bit like this, except um, white is down a move. But but here, white has excellent, excellent development in exchange for a pawn because that knight has moved so, so many times is the issue. This knight here has moved three times. Um, and so we're really getting our pieces out quick. So now, knight c3, queen h5. We're just going to swing that way. We're just going to swing this way. And so now of d4, we're castling long. We're castling long, and we're, we're always causing problems for this move d4. Um, and if not d4, um, we are just going to calmly finish our development. Maybe we want to play a move like, I don't know, bishop d6 at some point. Here we're going to play king d8, something. We're going to play a move like bishop d6, and maybe look at sacrificing here, because bishop d6 threatens to take that knight and take this. But anyway, regardless, black has good compensation for the pawn here with all their pieces very, very active, and I would rather play black. Similarly, in the engine's recommendation of c3 to finally, finally achieve their poor dream of playing d4, um, it kind of hampers the development of this a little bit, although white is doing okay here. But again, we are going to have some fun in this position, playing black with easy, easy development. This is what I love about gambits. It's you lose a pawn, and the pressure is completely on your opponent to find all the moves to defend, right? And even if they do, even if they survive the opening, you have lost the worst possible case scenario for you is you have a development advantage for a pawn, which is still more practical to play um, for for the side that's a pawn down. Um, um, and the worst case scenario for them is they like mess up the move order, mess up like one thing, play some like one natural move, and then there's like bishop takes f2 checkmate coming um, in, in in all the lines we studied. Okay, I hope you've loved this video. Um, I will post a leech s study for this, um, and I will be playing the bush gambit, bush gas gambit on stream. Uh, and I hope to hope you guys can send me your games, and I'm so excited to see the bush gas gambit in action. Thank you so much. Um, this has been Fide Master William Grafe, and have a great day.